Welcome to our panel, our distinguished panel, and our distinguished audience members. The panel, Borderland Narratives of the Bengal Partition 1947, has been a much awaited conversation. Borders and partitions have troubled histories of divisive politics, in which neighboring communities walled off from each other continue to be shaken up by tremors of such divisions long after the actual events. This panel examines community experiences related to India's partition in 1947. What legacies were lost as millions were forced to leave home and hearth and move to unfamiliar land on different sides of this arbitrary border, simply based on religious affiliations? Did the chronic and long-term violence and displacement of Bengalis of both faiths create a unique position for Bengal within India's nationalist struggle and its nation-building agenda in the post-colonial period? Was there some nuanced distancing that Bengali intellectual production effected following this cleaving which further affected the region's integration into the mainstream unity and diversity narrative? Are there possibilities of forthcoming research into political itineraries which emerge to push the everyday Bengali psyche to the center left few years after independence and which, in turn, influenced a big part of this era's cultural production? From personal perspectives to broader public memory, numerous stories form the inspiration for this panel. Shudipto Das is a successful entrepreneur and the author of three novels, The Broken Amorati, The Aryabhatta Clan, and The Echoes Clan. Shudipto is an alumnus of IIT Kharagpur and a columnist, musician, speaker at TEDx. He has co-founded two successful startups in the recent past. Shudipto is a typical Prabhashi Bangali. He lives outside Bengal in Bangalore and Bengali culture thrives under his tutelage, and he is the secretary of the current Sharothi Social Cultural Trust. By the way, his complimentary books are outside, you can take them. Shudito, the stage is yours. Hello. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, I think we have already uh, heard about the, you know, the background of uh, the partition of uh, Bengal, but I would like to know. Uh, give a little more perspective because I believe uh, the partition of Bengal was not in isolation. Uh, it was uh, a part of the Indian Indian partition. I mean, my family is a, is a victim of uh, you know the partition of the Eastern side. I mean, my father was only uh, seven years old and my uncle uh, was 14 years old and uh, like one, one fine morning in, well, not in 47 but in 48. Uh, I mean, my father's family, they did move uh, like immediately, I mean, like most uh, Hindu families, uh, they did move. So, I mean, one fine morning, my grandmother, she just woke up and she told uh, my uncle, uh, he was 14 year old, uh, to take my father and my younger uh, aunt, uh, who was just five years old. So, I mean, what happened was something like this, uh, a 14 year old boy, uh, he became the guardian of a seven year old boy and a five year old girl. And then uh, they took almost uh, 35 days to uh, come from Borishal. Uh, so Borishal is one of the divisions in Bangladesh which uh, adjoins uh, you know, Sundargarh, which is uh, one of the southern uh, districts of Bangladesh. Right? I never went to Bangladesh. I, uh, I mean, like most of the second generation, uh, I mean, Bengal is uh, whose parents had moved. Uh, I mean, I never went to Bangladesh and I uh, never saw all the horrors and all the violences myself. But what uh, happened is this, uh, when I was growing up, uh, I had one of my uh, very old aunts who used to stay with us. Uh, she was a widow and uh, she used to babysit me when, when I was you know, I mean, very young. I mean, my father and my mother both were uh, uh, working. And uh, a 70 plus year old lady uh, who sort of uh, who had moved out of Bangladesh almost uh, 
you know, 35 years back, like it was in, in, the, in the 70s, right? We uh, did 70s. And uh, her entire world was around Bangladesh, right? Like she has been staying in India for the last uh, more than 30 years and she never got a chance to go back to her homeland. But uh, like all she could talk about was all Bangladesh, uh, which was the East Bengal. And I grew up, uh, you know, hearing only stories of, you know, um, I mean, not only partition, but also various other things, right? About the village fears, about you know, like some very insignificant things, which I mean, nobody might even remember, right? But uh, with that old aunt, uh, she used to, you know, again and again, I mean, tell all the stories. That, and for a five, six-year-old child uh, who should be, you know, treated with more of fairy tales and all these things, and I grew up with the fairy tales of Bangladesh, right? And and then sort of uh, she died in 82 or 83 and sort of I mean, you know, life moved on. And somewhere in the, I think, uh, in 2007 and 8 when I thought that I would you know, take up writing, I figured out that uh, sort of the stories which I had heard about the partition, right, and, and also about Bangladesh, right, uh, those uh, are actually, you know, uh, a treasure trove to me. And Another very interesting thing which I figured out that there was absolutely nothing available about the Bengal side of the partition, right? When we talk about Indian partition, right? it's always the always the Punjab side, whether it's in the movies, whether it's in the literature, and whether it's in the you know a common psyche of Indians, right? Like uh, I mean, none of my friends and colleagues even knew that Bengal was also partition, right? Like uh, because uh, like uh, you know with movies. Uh, and uh, Hindi movies, and also with sort of uh, the you know Punjabi writings, which were already I mean been translated. Like Amrita Pritam Singh is, is one of the you know fantastic uh, you know, Punjabi writers, and then we have you know Bisham Sahani, and then we have you know uh, Krishna Balde, uh, uh, you know, guy, right? So there were huge amount of literature available, you know, in Punjabi literature and on, also in English literature. And Kushwan Singh had written. A fantastic book called Train to Pakistan, or I think Train from Pakistan. So, what uh, I mean, made me curious is that, you know, why is it so that uh, the two states were partitioned at the same time, but uh, sort of, you know, the narrative of Bengal has been totally forgotten. I mean, nobody knows about it. I mean, I searched in Google, absolutely, absolutely, you know, like no uh, sort of. Uh, uh, in, in, you know, material, right? and uh, like, uh, I mean, I think at this juncture, actually, uh, I'd like to, you know, uh, you refer to also with one of the, you know, we distinguished, I mean, guest who is I mean, here in the audience, right? I mean, Mr. Rajmohan Gandhi, I mean, I read one of his books, uh, which is Mohan Das, and while I was, you know, uh, I mean, thinking about writing about the uh, individual partition, I think his books has I mean, one chapter on the Noakali riots and uh, and I believe, I mean, that was one of the very few, uh, you know, material I mean, which I got about what exactly happened uh, in Bangladesh, right? And uh, I mean, so so that's why I I wanted to figure out, uh, I mean, what was different in Bengal that uh, it never, you know, got the attention. Right? And just to put, you know, some perspective to the, uh, you know, magnanimity and also to the, you know, the enormity of the issue, right? So. Uh, this, like, uh, if you see the undivided Bengal, which is which, uh, com which comprises both West Bengal and, and the present Bangladesh, and the current uh, Punjab in, in Pakistan is really different, but and so is uh, in India. Like the Indian Punjab has been broken into three states: uh, Punjab, Haryana, and Himachal Pradesh. So this is how it was partitioned, right? And so just uh, if you I mean, see the numbers, right? Like, uh, Sort of the idea of partition was to create uh, a safe home for the Muslims, I mean, which the Muslim League used to uh, uh, say. And uh, I mean, like uh, the partition of, of Panjab was very, I, I, I would say, sort of, uh, you know, uh, like realistically done, where each side has almost 4 million of minority, meaning that the, the Indian Punjab had around 4 million Muslims and the and the Pakistan side of Punjab had around 4 million you know, non-Muslims, which include Sikhs and Hindus. 
So the population exchange was very uh, similar, like four, 4 million from here to there and 4 million from there to there. But on the Bengal side, I mean, almost 8 million uh, sort of uh, non-Muslims were there in, uh, uh, in Bangladesh. And of course, I mean, West Bengal also had a huge population of, uh, of uh, non-Hindus, Muslims. But then, interestingly, only 700,000 Muslims from West Bengal moved to uh, uh, East Bengal. And, and very recently, I, uh, I mean, read an article written by a Bangladeshi journalist right, in, uh, in New York Times. And to, you know, it was published during the uh, I mean, 80 years of Indian independence. And, and there also, like he mentioned the same figure, that only 700k uh, Muslims uh, in, in traveled from uh, West Bengal to East Bengal, and that also not due to violence. They moved, you know, because of uh, like better opportunities, because they felt that uh, a, like, uh, a Muslim major country might have, you know, more opportunities for them. And if you see, uh, a, this 8 million who moved, from East Bengal to West Bengal, they didn't move in one shot because eight million people cannot move in one shot. Like it's you know uh, like, like twice the population transfer which happened in uh, in Punjab. So they you know trickled into uh, West Bengal over a very long time, um, starting from 1947 so till I mean 1971, where I mean, the Bangladesh was liberated. And uh, I mean like, I mean like my own family, they moved towards the end of 1948. So. Even if you see by sheer number, like it's you know double the size of Punjab partition, right? and also it's it's a very uh, I mean one sided affair, right? Like uh, and it's not population exchange, and here then again what uh, sort of I mean made me even more curious, right? The, if you compare the you know refugee crisis, right? I mean that happened over the last hundred years, World War Two created around eleven to 20 million, so I took 50 million as the as the median number. Bangladesh, you know, I mean, 1971 created around 10 million, and uh, you know, the 47 partition created around 8 million, uh, you know, uh, I mean, refugees, right? So that's among the highest in the world, and that makes the the Bengalis of East Bengal move to West Bengal as the I think second most, you know, second uh, largest. I mean, displaced community in the world if you go by I mean, these numbers. So again, I mean, I was curious that somehow, uh, sort of, why is such a big thing? I mean, totally escaped uh, the sympathy, empathy, or in attention of, of uh, the rest of the world. Okay. So, uh, so again, and another uh, interesting thing, right? I mean, which uh, sort of. And the Professor Hamza I mean, have also uh, I mean, pointed out, right, that uh, sort of you know uh, another level of uh, violence happened during the 1971 thing, right? But then again, sort of that was uh, not you know like between uh, like the two sides of I mean, Bengal, it was mainly you know between Bengal and Pakistan, right? So so that again sort of created another huge round of. Uh, you know, the refugees, right? Uh, but interestingly, I mean, West Bengal, and like I'm very proud of it, like I, I know we West Bengal, right? The, the population, sort of, you know, the percentage of Muslim it didn't reduce in India, sort of, somehow India managed to maintain its, you know, on a secular factor, right? It, in, uh, West Bengal had around 15% Muslims in 47, and now it's uh, 27%. I mean, I would like to, uh, you know, request uh, the Western academic share right, to, um, you know, to some study that why it is so that such a big event and such a big refugee problem, such a big displacement in the world, which is the, you know, the, the Bengal partition created, why was that totally uh, forgotten? I mean, I don't have any, uh, you know, any clear answer for that, but I believe I need to request some uh, in academic research to figure out at least, I believe, and for refugees, he asked him that, okay, but I'm a refugee, right? But, you know, it, uh, I think the only solace for a refugee is to see, you know, other people sympathizing them, like to see a lot of literature written about them. I think the Jews 
one of the biggest contributions for them was a huge amount of literature, films, movies made about them, right? So they realized, fine, you know, I'm not alone. There are billions of people who think that as well. But I think the Bengalis uh, of the Bengal partition, right? I mean, we don't even have that solace. I mean, nobody writes about us. Nobody talks about us. Thank you. Thank you. Your last sentence creates this wonderful segue into what Onustup is going to talk about, about loneliness in cinema. So it probably did not go all, um, it did not go neglected or ignored completely. I'm sure there was attention, but we would like to know more about that attention and open up paths of inquiry. Onustup Basu, thank you. Thank you.